my student was damaged in different forms of communication with the media, and the student will show an awareness of the potential for educational, political, or ideological influence on the media. Okay, um, when media was first started, there was a lot of flaws in the technology. But however, people were still very fascinated to what everything was being invented. But over time, there has been a lot of advancements. In our, for example, we read a, a section in the IBCC called Broadcast Media, and they talked about the how it allowed for the transmission of of images and sounds to to a wide audience. Because before, films only had um, the ability to record, but not play to a wide audience. But whereas now we have news that plays live and practically could, everyone in the world can practically see it. And also, we read an essay from Teresa Wilt from our language of comp called Popular Culture and Aftermath of September 11th is a, is a chorus without a hook, a movie without an ending. And she talked about how censorship plays a big role in the media. Language in the media can have various different forms. For example, it could either be the facial expressions used in the images, or it could simply be the tone and register used by the narrator in like news. Also, there is language through music, which can have a number of interpretations because the, the music composers usually don't just make music allowing for one interpretation. They try to relate to other people, that way they can also understand where they are coming from. And also, they're the Hollywood. In Hollywood, they make a lot of productions according to what's happening in our society. Okay, well, before I start this video, I would like to talk about it. This is something you probably heard or seen in the news recently, which is the Boston bombing that occurred on April 15, 2013. And this video I made is from clips of the ABC News, and this specific video doesn't contain, contain any audio, but however the actual news did. I made it this way, that way you could actually experience how it is without having narration, so you can make your own interpretations of the images you are seeing. Also because, also because the news, like what we know and about what's going on in our society greatly depends on the news and what they want us to know. Because say the news coverage only wants us to know specific things or they give us information from only one perspective, then how are we going to know if it's actually true or not? Also, as Turk Press and Eco-Terrorism paper stated, those who are working for the broadcasting of the news are contributing their own perspective by all, and it offers um, and it influences the public mind whether they wish to or not. Okay, and before I actually play this video, I may warn that it does contain some graphic scenes, and they may be too much for some of you to handle. So I would suggest looking away. Okay, as you can see, the news only shows a quick glimpse of these two victims. And there you can see the blood on the woman's face, but only for a very brief moment, so the audience doesn't really connect to what she was dealing with. And here is the actual bombing that happened during the marathon. And as you can see here, the man falling and the people running, it adds to the at atmosphere of desperation and terror because they don't know what to do. Okay, and when I first saw the news from the the ABC News, I was so shocked in knowing that there's actually people out there who are willing and capable capable of hurting other human beings. And as Teresa mentioned in her, in her essay, there's a strong yearning for escape from the American public because sometimes it just gets to the point where it's too much for us to handle, especially when it contains deaths in a, sh in a short amount of time. Because according to CNN, there was a death toll of three, including there was even an innocent eight-year-old boy. Imagine if like, that was one of our siblings. Wouldn't that be like, really hurtful for you? Also, among those 
Among those three that died, there was also about 144 people who were being treated by the hospital. And from those 144, there was like 10 that got their limbs amputated, which is pretty sad because they were running a marathon, like doing a good cause for their own health. And now because of that, they can't even, like it's going to be hard for them to recover like what, to what lifestyle they had before. Okay, and also the, this is also a clip that I made, which also doesn't have um, audio. This is from the 9-11, which we all know because we always pay respect to these people who, who passed away during that time. It was, the date was 9-11-2001. Okay, so this video is from the National History Channel. And these people falling are from also the ABC News and as you can see the people were very desperate to find a way to survive that they were jumping off buildings that were about like 1,370 feet high. And this man falling here was captured from a witness so as you can tell it is more zoomed in than the news. As you saw in this video, the, the news really didn't focus into the people falling, which is different from what the witness captured. As you can see, censorship plays a big role in the media because sometimes they don't want the audience to feel scared or feel too much terror and like they'll just start not wanting to live after all. Also, you probably didn't see, you probably haven't seen an angle of how the plane crashed into into the building because on mainstream they usually they usually portray the plane crash into the the buildings directly so you only see like the explosion and the fire and the debris afterwards. However on here from the history channel you saw directly how it hit the building and they also showed the like it shows you what damage can happen. Also in in the language of comp and also in Teresa's essay, Jack Valiant, he's a newspaper writer, he said that as long as there's a great story to tell, he doesn't mind for a building or two to be blown up. I find that pretty like heart heartless because I can't believe there's still unconsidered people who don't care about the fact that people died in this tragedy. And he, for him to just say that and then he also did, was just looking out for his own job because, well, of course, newspapers, all they want is to write number one stories. And Jack Vallant, he just said that because he wasn't found in that position of fighting between life and death. And besides the, um, the changes there were in, besides the censorship there was in the media, there was also censorship in music and movies. Now, there is also effects of the 9-11. For example, there is movies, like before the tragedy, a week before the tragedy, uh, Movie Ethics met with White House officials to talk about what Hollywood could do for, for the, um, what Hollywood could do for the war, war on effort, meaning that they were planning on using films to persuade the audience to go against other countries. Like say for example, they made a movie, they made a movie like showing us another country hurting us Americans or like mocking our own country. Then what most commonly would have happened is that us Americans would get really afraid or even get full of rage of knowing that that's a possibility that can happen. And also right after the 9-11, Teresa Teresa mentioned that the movies were pushed back due to their violent scenes or because they were thinking that after 9-11, the public wouldn't want to see that. So instead, they started producing more films that were more, more pleasant for the audience. For example, they started making films that are more funny, but it was, it was no way. It was weird because they also mixed them with violence, but they made it funny. Also, the people, the Hollywood film production, 
also contributed to the music because after they started changing the way they like produced the movies, then the music was also influenced to change like the um, lyrics they wrote. Because after 9/11, like rappers, they started trying to they ran into the hall to Hollywood to see what movies were going on, and then they started talk they started making movies that connected to people who had lost beloved ones in the tragedy. They started, there was a, um, many, in many musics they created, they, they incorporated those, those um, who lost, who lost the lives and they started paying respect to them. And they're all, in my opinion, all they were like doing is trying to relate to the people so they can become more famous because if they still continue to talk about tragic things and more than likely the audience wouldn't want to listen to them because all they would want to do is escape from what was happening and pretend as if nothing was wrong. Was wrong. Also, t TV Hawk Show, Anetta Lou was very shocked and saying, and when she realized that TV shows after, after some period of time uh, after 9-11, she was very surprised with knowing that television shows, they didn't want to make more shows about um, September 11 because they said that that was own news. Because there was also, because new things were happening and they wanted to keep people entertained with the story. Which is very contradicting because before, well people, there's, they don't want tragedies to happen but then again they want to read about them. Before I end it, I just want to wrap it up. In the popular culture of the aftermath of September 11, she talked about how censorship plays a big role in the media and in music and movies, and how people are really are affecting that because their desire of quality entertainment leads for all these productions to be made. And okay, this is a this is a video about Spring's fire that happened just recently and this video was recorded by a witness and this one actually actually does have audio. Because it's mostly trying to go that way. But there's so much brush there, it's, it's a very rich... 32 years were since the last fire. That's a lot of brush. The average back in those days, I, I looked... This is intense.